Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to make use of hybridization to compare bond energies. Now let us start our discussion comparing these two compounds. We have methane, CH4, ethene, CH2 double bond, CH2. Now if I want to compare the bond energy involving the CH bond in methane versus the CH bond in ethene, then how do I decide which CH bond is more stable? Now this is fairly interesting because if I consider CH bond versus CH bonds in both compounds, they are essentially the same thing, right? So if I consider bond energies from the data booklet, we actually only have one value that is stated in the data booklet. So what this means is we can't really compare bond energy from data booklet to decide which CH bond is more stable. So that's where hybridization comes in. So what we can do is we can make use of the state of hybridization for carbon in methane and carbon in ethene to determine the bond energy for these two CH bonds. Now before we do the comparison, let us do a recap involving hybridization. Hybridization it is the mixing of valence orbitals to form a number of sigma bonds. So if we use carbon as an example, carbon will form a certain number of sigma bonds depending on the compound it is in, then you mix that number of valence orbitals to get that number of hybridized orbitals. So for example, if carbon has four sigma bonds in the case of methane, for single bonds, it is forming four sigma bonds. So it will mix four of its valence orbitals, 2s orbital, 2px, 2py, 2pz orbital to get four hybridized orbitals. And the name of this hybridized orbital will be sp3 hybridized because Literally, we are mixing SPPP orbitals to get four equal hybridized orbital. So the name will be sp3. Now sp3 carbon, the shape with respect to the carbon will be tetrahedral. Now how about the second scenario where carbon will have something like this? In this case, carbon will have three sigma bonds and one pi bond. Remember the double bond is one sigma plus one pi bond. So the number of sigma bonds that this carbon is forming is three sigma bonds. So therefore, the state of hybridization in this case will be sp2 hybridized. Because what carbon will do is it will mix three orbitals to get three hybridized orbitals. So carbon will mix its 2s orbital, 2px and 2py orbital, and we'll get three hybridized orbital. And the name of this hybridized orbital will be sp2 hybridized orbitals. And shape with respect to carbon in this case will be trigonal planar. Now finally, the last example where carbon forms this kind of bonds, either two double bonds or one single bond and one triple bond. Now in both scenarios, the number of sigma bond that carbon is forming is two sigma bond and two pi bond. Remember a double bond, it is a sigma bond and one pi bond. A triple bond, it is one sigma plus two pi bonds. So the number of sigma bonds that the carbon is forming is two sigma bonds. So therefore you need to mix two orbitals to get two hybridized orbitals. You'll be mixing two S and 2px orbital. So the name for this hybridized orbital will be sp hybridized. Shape with respect to carbon, in this case, would be linear. This is pretty fundamental. That means in this case, we should be familiar with the state of hybridization of a carbon depending on the number of sigma bonds that it is forming. Now we need another idea, which is actually fairly simple and it is already presented here. The concept it is percentage s character. Now percentage s character, what we want is out of the number of orbitals that the carbon is using for mixing, how many of it it is actually belonging to the 2s orbital and the percentage s character that arises because of that. Now if I consider sp3 hybridized orbital, remember what we are doing is we are mixing 1s orbital and 3p orbitals. So the percentage S character will just be one quarter because out of four orbitals that you're using for mixing, one of it, it is the S orbital. The remaining three are P orbitals. So the percentage S character in this case will be one quarter or 25% S character. If I consider SP2 hybridized out of three orbitals that I'm mixing, how many of them comes from the S orbital? We only have one of them, right? So out of three orbitals, one of it, it is the S orbital. So percentage S character will be one third S character or 33%. Then finally, SP hybridized orbital, 
out of two orbitals that you're mixing, only one of it, it is the S orbital. So this will be 50% S character because out of two orbitals, one of it is S orbital, the other guy it is the P orbital. So percentage S character in this case will be half or 50% S character. The next thing we want to explain is why are we bothered about the percentage S character? What's so special about the S character? Now our hybrid, it is a mixture. So therefore the mixture will possess the properties of the components that is inside the mixture. So for hybridized orbital, the idea it is the same. If for example, SP3 hybridized orbital, because you have one quarter percent S character and 75% P character, then your hybridized orbital will actually resemble 25% like your S orbital and 75% of your P orbital. So the bigger the percentage S character, the greater you will resemble an S orbital. Now, if I compare S orbital versus P orbital in the same subshell, what's so interesting and what is the difference between these two guys? Now, what we have learned is if I compare 2S subshell versus 2P subshell, which subshell is more stable? Actually, S subshell is more stable than P subshell. So 2S is more stable than 2P. And the consequence is the S orbital will be closer to the nucleus, or we can say that it is shorter, and the P orbital will be further away from the nucleus. So therefore, it is less stable. The closer you are to the nucleus, the more stable you would be. So if I have a hybridized orbital with greater S character, the consequence would be the orbital will be shorter and you'll be also closer to the nucleus. So the conclusion that we want to have is the greater the percentage, the S character, the shorter the hybridized orbital. If I consider SP3 hybridized orbital, because it is only 25% S character, in terms of the length or the distance from the nucleus, SP3 hybridized orbital will be the longest and you'll be the least stable if an electron is in the sp3 hybridized orbital. Now, if I consider sp2 hybridized orbital, which is one third s character or 33% s character, it'll be slightly shorter than the sp3 hybridized orbital, and the electron inside the sp2 orbital will be closer to the nucleus. Then finally, if I consider sp hybridized orbital, which has the biggest percentage s character, so sp hybridized orbital will resemble the s subshell or the s orbital to the biggest extent. So an electron in the sp orbital will be the closest to the nucleus because the sp orbital will be the shortest. So finally, we can come back to here and compare the CH bond in both instances. Now, both are CH bonds, but because of the state of hybridization of my carbon, then the consequence is the hybridized orbital length is different so therefore, if we form a bond involving an orbital, which is of a different state of hybridization, then actually the bond length, it is slightly different. So if I consider methane, methane carbon, it is sp3 because this is four sigma bond. And for ethene, the carbon, it is sp2 because this is three sigma bond. Remember double bond, it is one sigma plus one pi bond. So sp3 versus sp2. If you recall what we have done previously, sp3 orbital has smaller percentage s character. So therefore, the sp3 carbon will actually have a longer orbital. So therefore, when it forms a bond with hydrogen, this bond length tends to be longer and weaker. If I consider sp2 hybridized carbon, then the sp2 hybridized orbital will be slightly shorter. So therefore, the CH bond will also be correspondingly shorter and slightly stronger. So the explanation actually is here sp3 has less s character so it has a longer orbital and the ch bond that we are forming will be longer and weaker bond energy would be lower sp2 carbon on the other hand it has a greater s character shorter orbital so therefore it forms a shorter and stronger ch bond the bond energy would be higher now in addition to comparing ch bonds we can also compare carbon carbon bond so Let's have this example. So if we have this compound and we have three carbons that we want to consider, CX, CY, and CZ, and we have two different bond energies that we want to compare, this double bond between carbon X and carbon Y, and this double bond between carbon Y and carbon Z. Again, if I compare carbon-carbon double bond versus carbon-carbon double bond, there's no 
information in the data booklet that allow us to differentiate between which carbon-carbon double bond it is more stable. So therefore, we will have to think of, okay, maybe I can use hybridization and see whether all these carbons, what is the state of hybridization? Is there any difference in the state of hybridization? So that's the first thing that we should be looking at. So if I consider this carbon, this has three sigma bonds. This carbon CX is actually sp2 hybridized. Now, how about carbon CY? Carbon CY has two double bonds, so it has two sigma bonds. So CY, it is sp hybridized. Now CZ, it is also sp hybridized because the scenario, it is exactly the same as CY, two double bond. So carbon Z is also sp hybridized. Now the next thing we want to do is if I want to compare this double bond between CX and CY and this double bond between CY and CZ, so the comparison, actually, I've separated them here. Let me write down the state of hybridization of each of this carbon. CX, as previously discussed, this is sp2. CY is sp. Then this is still CY, right? sp hybridized. CZ is sp hybridized. Then we realize that actually this carbon-carbon double bond between CX and CY and this carbon-carbon double bond between CY and CZ they are actually slightly different, right? Because the state of hybridization for the carbon is different. So therefore the bond length will be different. So if I compare what we have previously, sp3 hybridized, it has a smaller S character. So therefore the orbital will be the longest. sp2 will be slightly shorter because it has bigger S character. sp orbital will be the shortest because it has the biggest percentage S character. So if I consider sp versus sp2, which is in this scenario, the state of hybridization that we have is only between sp and sp2 hybridized carbon. So let's say sp it is short and sp2 it is long. So in terms of comparison, it will be slightly easier. So sp2 it is long. So this is a long orbital. sp2 is the long orbital. sp it is the short orbital because it has bigger percentage S character. sp it is a short orbital. And finally, sp for carbon Z, it is also a short orbital. Actually, from here, we can tell the bond length already because I have a long orbital overlapping with a short orbital versus a short orbital overlapping with a short orbital. Short overlap with short, the consequence, of course, will be the carbon-carbon double bond will be shorter. So therefore, it will be more stable and the bond energy would be higher. Now, in this case, because I have one orbital which is slightly longer. So this carbon-carbon double bond will be slightly longer. So therefore, the bond energy will be weaker. All right, so therefore, the conclusion is here. As mentioned previously, because I have a slightly longer sp2 hybridized orbital that is used to form a double bond with the other carbon, therefore, this carbon-carbon double bond will be longer and weaker. The bond energy will be lower. The other carbon-carbon double bond, it is between sp carbon and sp carbon. So this will be a shorter and stronger carbon-carbon double bond. So therefore, the bond energy would be higher. All right, so that was the discussion involving making use of hybridization to compare bond energies. Now remember, usually this idea comes in when we are comparing two of the same type of bonds, CH bond versus CH bond, carbon-carbon single bond versus carbon-carbon single bond, or carbon-carbon double bond versus carbon-carbon double bond. If we refer to the data booklet comparing bond energy values, we will realize that we cannot compare the two bond energies using values in the data booklet because there's only one value. It should trigger us to think of the state of hybridization of carbons to compare bond energies. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.